In the last video, we learned how to calculate Z statistic and build a confidence interval using a Z and a T distribution. I would encourage you to watch that before watching this one. In this video, we will learn how to use Python to calculate the Z statistic and build the confidence intervals. Let's say we want to find out the probability of generating a daily return that is different from zero for S&P 500 index. In this simple experiment, we don't care if we generate a positive or a negative return. All we need to know is if we can generate a return different than zero. Let's see how we can use Python to calculate this probability. First, let's import our standard libraries. To calculate the Z statistic, we will also need to import norm module from scipy.stats. Now let's download a sample of daily index prices from Yahoo Finance for let's say 10 years. Let's call the new dataset as SP. This is the ticker for S&P 500 index. Let's select the start date as 2009-12-31 and end date as 2019-12-31. Once we execute this code, Python will pull the S&P 500 index data from Yahoo Finance. In general, it is a good idea to view the data to make sure there are no errors while downloading the data. The head or the tail functions can be used to see the first or the last five rows. Everything looks good. Now let's calculate the log returns by executing the following lines of code. This creates a new column, log return in the SP dataset. We can use the describe function to get the summary statistics or descriptive statistics for the log returns, such as the mean, standard deviation, number of observations, etc. Now let's plot the daily returns to see any patterns using the plot function from the matplotlib library. Let's also add a red line at zero so that we can visually see if the returns look different from zero. We can do that by executing these two lines of code. Press shift and enter. The returns look evenly distributed around zero and so no significant pattern emerges to conclude that the average returns are not zero. Now let's plot a histogram by typing the following code. Let's divide the returns into 100 equal bins. The returns seem to be symmetrically distributed around zero. Again, no clear pattern emerges to get to our conclusions. Now let's compute the probability that the returns are different from zero by calculating the Z statistic. Recall the formula for Z statistic. We need the mean and the standard error of the daily returns and we'll also need the number of observations to calculate the Z statistic. Let's create a variable n to store the number of observations. We can use the shape function to calculate n. We can also use the mean function to calculate the mean return. And let's store the result in a new variable x bar. Finally, we can use the std function with one degree of freedom to calculate the standard error. Let's execute these three lines of code to calculate our inputs. Now we are ready to calculate the Z statistic by executing the following code and let's store the result in a new variable Z hat. Using a print command shows that the Z hat is equal to 2.276, which means that the mean of daily returns for S&P 500 index is 2.276 stand errors above zero. To calculate the probability associated with the Z value of 2.276, we can use the CDF function from the norm library. We can execute the following line of code and save the output in a new variable called p-value. Print command shows the p-value of 0.9771 or there is a 97.71% probability that the average daily returns from S&P 500 index is different from zero. Now, if you want to know what is the probability for the average daily returns on S&P 500 index to be positive, we need to use one tail test using the following code. Once we execute these lines, we get a p-value of 0.9886 or there is a 98.86% probability that the average daily returns for S&P 500 index is positive. Now let's get the 95% confidence interval using a Z distribution. Recall the lower bound of the confidence interval is given by x bar minus Z alpha by 2 times standard error. We know x bar and the standard error and we can use ppf function from the norm module to get the z alpha by 2. 
Let's save it as z left as follows. We will also need z alpha by 2 for the right tail to calculate the upper bound of confidence interval. Now we can plug in all the numbers in the confidence interval formula to get the lower and the upper bounds. To get the confidence interval using t distribution, we need to import t from scipy.stats by executing the following code. To get the t value for the right and the left tails, we need to input our desired level of confidence, which is 95% for this example, and the degrees of freedom, which is equal to n minus 1. Then we plug all the numbers in the formula to calculate the confidence interval by executing the following code. Notice that the confidence interval from t distribution is very similar to the confidence interval from the z distribution. As discussed in the last video, the t distribution is equivalent to a z distribution for a large sample.